past Sky in Pittsburgh. Phil Dawson will kick it off, and we're underway. Texas won the toss and deferred, and the return by Mark Butler from the eight-yard line with an alley. And finally steps out of bounds across the 35-yard line and knocked out there by Victor Frazier. So the Panthers with a new starting quarterback this year, Sean Fitzgerald. He has a brother, Pat, a backup tight end for the Longhorns. Sean, a transfer from L.A. Valley College, where he set the single-season passing record over 3,000 yards as a sophomore. 27 touchdown passes and 59%. Beat out the incumbent starter who returns, John Ryan. Panthers from the I-36 yard line on first down. And Curtis Martin gets the call. He will get it a lot today. Last year handled it almost 37% of their offensive snaps, running and catching. Their leading rusher and top pass receiver. The Nations Bank starting offense for the Panthers with Dukes blocking for Martin. Belvin from El Paso Andrus, the tight end, gels a sprint champion in the Big East. And Billy Davis from El Paso Irvin High School, the other wide out. Reuben Brown heads the offensive line. He is a preseason all Big East nominee at 305 pounds a senior from Lynchburg, Virginia. Dave, that was an interesting situation. Pittsburgh with a penalty on the first play of the game. They had 12 guys on the field. It looked like they had a few more players than Texas. Well, when you're three and eight, you look for every possible way to improve. This is a Southwest Conference officiating crew today, by the way, headed by referee Larry Fisher, and the mark off against the Panthers has them back at their 21-yard line. You know, it was interesting because they brought those two big tight ends in after they broke the huddle on the first play. Can't have two tight ends, two wideouts, and two running backs. So on first and 25, first man through is Dukes, the fullback, who carries very seldom, but averages almost six yards per carry when he does get the call. Wattler on the tackle for the Longhorns and the Nations Bank starting defensive unit looks this way. Stoney Clark weighing in at around 320-330 at nose guard. Rackens their sack leader a year ago. Reed, their leading returning tackler at outside linebacker, and this is the new 3-4 look for the Longhorns. A fine secondary, mostly sophomores, Ellis the only senior. Normally, Frazier starting for the injured Chris Carter today, and he is also a senior. Martin just across the 30 and hit by Clark. And it'll be third and still about 15 for the Panthers. There's a good shot of Curtis Martin, and he is something special. Pittsburgh knows if they want to get a, get a big play, they can go right to Martin. But this is exactly what Texas wants to do, force the Panthers into third and long situations. They got help with the penalty on the first series of downs. We'll see how they do. Pitt expected to go with this three wide outlook quite a bit today. They go on the draw play to Martin. With the cutback hit by Frazier and then driven back by Trey Thomas, and he won't have the first down that it appeared he might get when he made the cutback toward the middle of the field. So the Longhorn defense is held. Well, you can see how special he is once he gets the ball. Of course, they're going to be honoring Tony Dorsett at halftime, and a lot of people feel like this guy reminds them of Tony Dorsett. Watch the cut back to the right side. Just a beautiful effort. Just about got that first down. Came up about four yards shy, and on to do the punting is Nate Cochran. Excellent year. Nearly 44 yards per kick last year. Curtis Jackson lets this one hop, and it takes a Texas bounce to the 23-yard line. Cochran with not much of a first effort, just 35 yards, and Shea Morenz will go to work, the sophomore from San Angelo Central High School. The nation's top returning sophomore quarterback. Last year, he was the only freshman in the top 30 in the nation in total offense and got much better as the season went on. He had a learning curve last year, and John Makovic expects a major step forward from Shea Morenz this year. Much more patient, much more comfortable in his system. Eric Jackson in motion. 
And Roderick Walker, the starting tailback, through the middle for about four or five yards. The offensive unit for the Longhorns will line up thusly. Juan Kemp, who has uh, sat out because of a transfer from Michigan and an injury. Finally, the starter at fullback. Walker and Anthony Holmes will alternate at tailback. Jackson and Matt Davis starting for Pinckney and Adams with Hakes the tight end. They've moved Blake Brockermeyer from the right side to left tackle to block for Morenz's line side this year. Brockermeyer preseason All-American. Tailback again and Walker for no game. Bring up third to about five. The Panther defense gave up 475 yards per game. One of the worst statistically in the country last year. But one of their better defenders, Tom Bart, fourth-year starter, second team, all Big East at right end. Tumulty may be their best overall. He's a Butkus Award candidate and led them last year with 114 tackles. And in the secondary, Maurice Williams, their co-leader with just three interceptions last year. They don't force that many takeaways. Texas will not get close to the first down. Mike Halifant. Juan Kemp and Jason Chavis there to help Halepin. Both teams very conservative in their play calling. You would expect Texas to be throwing the ball on third and long. They decide to go with the inside handoff and of course Pitt there to stop things. Loss of a couple will bring on Dwayne Bosick, one of the better putters in college football last year, better than 41 yards per kick. favorable roll down to the 27 yard line and we'll see the Panther offense for the second time no score 10 47 to play in the first quarter just the second meeting ever between these two programs they met in the 87 Blue Bonnet Bowl in the Astrodome Texas won at 32 27 behind a huge day from Tony Jones second time the Panthers have it they keep it on the ground at about four yards through the middle for Curtis Martin. First contact by Tony Bracken. Martin, who rushed for 1,075 yards last year, missing one game, averaged over five per carry, and has an excellent chance to pass everyone but Tony Dorsett on that list. He is just an average year away from away from the passing Kervin Richards. Both Dorsett and Richards, of course, former Dallas Cowboys. This is Dukes. Free at midfield, finally knocked down by Brian Westbrook. Texas defense reacting to the fake, and they forgot all about the fullback who carried for 30 yards. Terrific a note of that one. Terrific, yes, he is making a note of that one. Terrific jump off the ball by Baskins on the left side. But then you can see it was a big hole on the left side as Dukes just takes it for great yardage. Converted tailback with tailback speed at 215 yards. Just inside the 40, Dukes again. This time they were ready. Thomas Baskin, senior from Riverside, California, who started nine games a year ago, wrapping up Chad Dukes. You know, it's kind of interesting with the development of Stoney Clark. We said he was about 320 playing right over the center. Baskin was able to move to the outside. Really gives him a, a lot more depth. Which really was one of the major reasons behind changing from the 4-3. Fitzgerald on what appears to be a busted play will keep and maybe pick up one of the 35. If the change for Texas to the 3-4 is, is a quantum leap from what traditionally Texas defense has always been about. And it's, it has to do with depth, Dave. When you talk about uh, this change, you talk to the Texas coaches and they say that they wanted the change because they had more players in the linebacking position with more speed than they had depth at big defensive linemen. And if you can get that speed in that, uh, in that intermediate zone, then you've got a tremendous advantage moving to the 3-4. Third and five for Pitt. And Fitzgerald going deep for the corner and overthrows Chad Askew. 
with good coverage by Joey Ellis to bring up fourth down. Ellis, the senior from Tyler, John Tyler. The experienced leader in the secondary, which has been rated coming into the year among the best in college football. Well, the, the great thing about these defensive backs right now, and, and the great thing that uh, Gary Darnell has a chance to do is he has a chance to play man-for-man -man defense because of their speed, their quickness in the defensive secondary, something that he hasn't been able to do in the past. Cochran, with only 35 yards to work with, will head for the coffin corner with this one. And nail it at the two-yard line. Well, he took aim and he hit the bullseye. 32 yards to pin Texas way deep. You know, football is a game of field position, especially early. And Pitt doing a nice job pinning the Longhorns. Special teams, you can't say enough about the play of special teams. They are so crucial and so critical especially early in a game like this. By the way, we apologize for some video difficulties we're having. First down to about the five yard line on the pitch. Texas just trying to get some room to operate. Juan Kemp took it. That's the new defensive coordinator, Gary Darnell. Obviously excited about the prospects this year. He has got some fine players uh, defensively. They're going to have to step up and really play. This team was a very young defense last year. They're ready to make an impact. Kemp left this time and read well by Tom Bart. A loss back to the original line of scrimmage, the two. And the running game very slow to unfold so far for Texas. Well, very conservative play calling for Texas, and one of the reasons is because of the field position. They're trying to make something happen on the ground. Brents has yet to throw a pass. Third and ten from the middle of the end zone going deep for Eric Jackson and incomplete. Boy, for a moment he flashed wide open and then Maurice Williams was able to close the gap and get in the way and Texas will have to punt. Well, if that ball is just a little bit more out in front of him, Texas may have had a 98 yard touchdown reception. Ball was just a little bit behind him. Marin's throwing into just a little bit of a wind in his face. Didn't put out there, put it out there quite far enough. That is as deep as you can legally go to get a punt off for Dwayne Vosick. Mark Butler waiting for this one at the 41 of Texas, and he'll take it right there. To the 25. The kick went 38, the return went 15. Robert Crenshaw ended it, and the Panthers are set up with beautiful position. Seven and a half minute mark in the first quarter. No score, but Pitt at the Texas 25 when we return. Pittsburgh yet to score, but they have won the battle of field position midway in the first quarter from the Longhorn 25 yard line. And they go to Martin with the cutback. Burrows his way for six or seven yards. He just got underneath Norman Watkins and kept his balance forward for some extra real estate. Martin, as we said, will carry it well over a third of their plays from scrimmage one way or the other. You were talking about Norman Watkins missing the tackle. They had Martin stopped about the line of scrimmage. Now, Martin uh, has got tremendous strength, and you need to really wrap up in order to stop him. Watkins didn't do it there. Seven yards per snap so far. Fitzgerald with a flag down has Gels, who breaks another tackle and is inside the 10 yard line. Dietrich Gels, their best deep threat with almost 22 yards per catch. Phenomenal in his career. Big East 100 meters champion and the mark off would have been against Texas. 
We're offsides. 13 yard pickup. First and goal, Panthers. Well, Dietrich Gels really adds a lot to this pit offense. When you've got a guy like Ch Curtis Martin in the backfield running the football, you need somebody on the outside that can make big plays. Well, he's got 4-4 speed. Uh, obviously, like you said, Dave didn't play a lot uh, last year because of the injury problems. And he can really make things happen as we saw on that play. Comes wide left. To work on Bryant Westbrook. First and goal, Panthers. Martin through the middle. Great second effort again to the two yard line. Texas defenders feeling like they have him wrapped up and then he gets loose and he's got three or four extra yards. Trey Thomas finally stopped him. Well once again the power. Watch Brown the big tackle. He misses his block and then he gets up trying to hit somebody. Now watch this. He just goes and just starts pushing that pile towards the goal line. Extra blocker is in Billy West in the backfield second and goal from the two Martin does not get it. Stoney Clark and Kevin Watler plugging up the middle well that time it will be third and goal. And uh, on the Dr. Pepper roundup Fred Goldsmith the former Rice head coach debuting at Duke with an early lead against Maryland. You know, Dave, it's crucial right here for the Texas defense to get good penetration into the offensive backfield of Pitt. You've got to move the line of scrimmage back in order to stop the power running game. But look for Tech, I mean, Pitt to go wide here. Full house. Martin does go wide and gets in. Curtis Martin with the power inside and he comes out to the outside. Now we're going to take a look at this. After the extra point he will come right at us but you can see how valuable he is to this pit team. Six nothing and David Merrick on for the extra point. Out of the hold of John Ryan to make it seven nothing Pittsburgh. He missed it. Never had a chance with that very weak effort. It remains six to nothing. One more time. Take a look at the power of Curtis Martin. Looks like he wants to dip inside. Then he comes back to the outside and he just beats the Texas defense to the goal line. And there's just something special about this guy. One more time. You can see as he gets that ball, he smells that cone and he goes after it. And that is a touchdown. And then the extra point, well, I'm not sure. It looked like the hold was there, but a bad miss. We'll return after this from Southwest Airlines. To take it 25 yards for their first score of the year because of the terrific punt to set the whole thing up by Nate Cochran. The extra point missed at 6 0, 5 minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first quarter. There is really no win factor to speak of but Texas as if they're going into a 50 mile an hour gale in this first quarter the return by Curtis Jackson to the 28 yard line the well, last time they started on their two much better this time the hit by Miles Davis at the end of a 20 yard return. Well it's kind of interesting with the philosophy at Texas right now. John Makovic has been the head coach been calling all the offensive plays. He has now turned that over to Gene Dahlquist and this is the first real time that D Gene Dahlquist has called the offensive plays. You can see the numbers on Shea Morantz. He is something special but you got to make the right calls in order to show what kind of ability he has. And what that illustrates is the improvement curve that he showed as a freshman much better as the year went on ball is loose and covered for a big loss. Mike Mooring and Tom Tumulty combining. The big stick. 
by Tumulty, the Butkus Award nominee, a junior from Penn Hills, a suburb of Pittsburgh. Watch him go right between the center and the guard, both offensive linemen blocking their defensive people out, and Tumulty went right through the middle, had Marins before he had a chance even to hand the ball off. Those are the kind of plays he is used to making. Anthony Holmes alertly falling on it, but a loss of six. Open, tight end Jimmy Hakes hit hard at the 30 by Denoris Mosley, the left corner. Their top freshman a year ago, and a cousin of Rodney Pete, the backup quarterback for the Cowboys. Those are the kind of things that start to loosen up your offense when you can run play action and then hit the easy pass, get uh, some necessary yards back, trying to set yourself up for third and seven after looking at a second and 14, second and 15. Texas needs to open up their offense. Good protection out of the shotgun and overthrown intended for Eric Jackson. In double coverage at midfield. Let me say this about Texas's offense, having come from a passing team at BYU where you're throwing the ball 60, 70 percent of the time. It takes a little bit of time for you to get your timing down, and especially if you take Adams and Pinckney out of the lineup, two guys that you really concentrate on and you're really going to, for everybody to get on the same page. So we might see Texas's offense struggle just a little bit, but they need to come out and throw the ball and set Marenz up. Classic hit on the low snap, gets it off, and he's actually going to get a roll in the pit territory on what was almost disaster. He squeaks through a 21 yard kick where it looked for all the world as if he would be stopped for a loss on the snap. You know things just don't look right with this Texas team. I'm not sure if they're tight right now or maybe they are uh, there is too much is expected out of them but the tackling has not been crisp. The play calling has not been crisp. The special teams play has not been crisp and, crisp, and certainly that has to unnerve John Makovic. They have lost seven of their last eight opening games. It's a yearly problem. Coming out of the gate with a very slow beginning. Good hit by Watler. And Jim Bob Evans on the first down carry by Martin. This, uh, when it was set up, looked to be a tougher opponent than it has turned out to be with Pitt coming off a, a real down year, three and eight with no defense last year. But traditionally, Texas opening on the road at some of the toughest places to play in America at Auburn, at BYU, Colorado, Penn State. And that's another factor in losing seven of the eight openers. Fitzgerald with a short toss complete to Chad Askew. And it'll be third and about six. Well, that's a better job on the outside with the defensive backs. The two hits on the linebackers, or uh, the two linebacker hits that they, they put on Martin just a, a play earlier. That's what we're expecting to see with this Texas defense. You took a look at uh, uh, Brian Westbrook, one of the top recruits at a quarterback cornerback position in the country. And you can see that Texas right now is coming up in a pressing man-for-man -man defense on the outside. Three wide outs. And intended for Martin. And that is ruled a lateral. Texas swarming the loose ball. No indication of a recovery yet. As the officials confer, there was never an indication that that was an incomplete pass. So Texas correctly reacted as if the ball were still live. And we've still seen no indication otherwise. Nobody blew a whistle when that ball was going around on the ground. Incomplete pass, they now rule it. You know, I think if we take a look at that one again, that is the wrong call because I believe that ball was going backwards. Quarterback coming back and he's trying to thro throw this little swing pass. And if he puts the ball in front of the running back, it's a forward pass, but look, the ball is behind him. He has to reach his right hand behind his back and then nobody blows a whistle. Nobody says it's incomplete. Texas very alertly gets on the ball. It's a but big break for Pitt. What a huge break. That's a Trey Thomas recovery if it's called correctly. Cochran again will try to angle it out. He did it beautifully last time, and he just misses here. 
But that should be Texas ball in pit territory, and instead they start from their 20 yard line. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of the University of Texas, the Southwest Conference, and Raycom Incorporated, intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the video or audio portions of this program without prior written consent is forbidden. That's about a 40-yard decision. Yes, it is, but this uh, Texas offense should be in a situation now where they have the butterflies out of their system. They need to open up their offense right now, see if they can get something started. Play action, Moren's ready to open up and goes for Davis, who is out of bounds. Davis, a huge target, 6'5 and 196, sophomore from Fort Worth Brewer. I like play action pass on first down, but the ball just takes a little bit too long to get there. Davis was open on the sidelines. You only have to have one foot in in college football, and that is a very close call. Could have been called either way. Davis playing the spot that uh, Pinckney normally would. A good route runner, good hands, and as we said, he's a nice big target for Morenz to look at. Averaging a half yard per play. They go on second and ten to Anthony Holmes, who almost spun away from the contact. Almost turned that one into a nice big gainer. David Sumner finally dragging him down with the ankle tackle to free safety. You know, Tumulty is just such an aggressive player. Watch him inside. He fights off the block there. But this guy is just a goer. He comes over, and if he doesn't come right there to finish off, Holmes might, uh, might go a, a few more yards. But he is just a load inside. Got a big heart. Third and four. Late snap, and Morenz will have to keep. Has the first down and five extra. Was that a broken play or was that terrific sleight of hand? You know, this is just amazing. Once again, out of sync, but it was interesting. The official standing right behind the quarterback did not throw the flag until Morenz had run out of bounds. You know, I think the ball came up and it, I think the center thought that Morenz was underneath him and not in the shotgun formation. And he popped the ball up and hit himself in the rear end. Luckily held onto the ball and then threw it back to Shea. He double plus. This is amazing that wasn't a fumble. It is a procedure penalty against Texas. They had the first down yardage. Now they'll march it back to their 21 and need nine. Your procedure, snap infraction on the offense, repeat the down. I think he thought that Morantz was underneath him. Now watch the ball come up, hit him in the rear end, then he gets it, and then he throws it, and the official doesn't know what to call. Everybody goes on the movement of the football. Which was very much delayed in this instance. Looking for their first third down conversion. Pitt defense gave up 50% of those last year. Open, caught. Eric Jackson drops it, picks it back up. And is out of bounds at the 47 yard line. So they get their first third down conversion of the day and almost give it right back. 26 yard pickup by Eric Jackson. Well, that was a nice job by Morenz as he stands right in there, pops the ball, and then he just gets it from the backside and he gets it from the front side. Very slow getting up. In fact, I'm not sure if he's totally back but you know that's what you got to do if a team is going to drop into a zone defense and you're running this passing game you got to find the little holes inside and Shea has been going to the outside receivers work that inside Jackson just two catches last year as a junior Davis had one Anthony Holmes unable to get the corner turned and then squeezes out four yards at the tail end of the run chased by Tumulty and Mosley now, Holmes got something out of nothing that time because as he came around the outside. P, by the way, for Priest Anthony Holmes, as he is now known. Priest, his first name, Anthony, his middle name. And uh, referring to get that first name in. Junior from San Antonio Marshall. Has never carried the ball a whole lot, but has averaged almost six yards per carry in his career. 
Splitting time at tailback. Lorenz deep got hit again. Has a man open, deflected, intended for Quentin Wallace. What a play by Maurice Williams. He had man coverage going deep, and it was a great play by Williams. As that ball is just once again a little bit underthrown, the Texas receiver beating the defensive player for Pitt. And if Shea has a chance to look at that one again, he's got two players coming across the field on the play fake all by themselves. Completely fooled Pitt. On he's the play. had two deep balls that were a foot short. One for Jackson, that one for Wallace. Room up the middle. Moran slides with a first down to the 44 yard line. Showing the mobility. And shaking off a couple of plays ago, a, a monstrous sandwich. It, it was. Now, I mean, they put a little ketchup and mustard on that baby. They hit him from the backside and from the front side. You know, in this pass offense, as a quarterback, you want to be at about a 60% completion percentage or you're not reading the defenses the way you're supposed to. And that's been one of the problems Shea has had, just understanding the, the philosophy of this offense. But he's got all the ability in the world. Rolling off play action and almost intercepted by Mosley. In his hands after it had been deflected off the hands of Steve Bradley, the tight end. Stops the clock at 38 seconds in the first quarter. Shows you the strength of his arm. Watch as he comes out here once again. Great fake on his part. Comes out here, puts the ball right where it should be. That, that's a ball that should be caught. A little bit hard, but it should have been caught. 6-0 Pittsburgh, Texas with their best penetration so far. The 44-yard line on second and 10. Draw play, Holmes gets away from one but not both defenders. Chased out by Hayes Clark, the backup inside linebacker. 31 seconds. Once again, Dave, it just does not look crisp. Everything is not functioning properly with this offense, and I'm not sure exactly what it is. You know, it's really difficult when you take two top players out of your offensive team, two players that you really respect, and Adams and Pinkney as far as their play on the football field. But it just doesn't look right. He played the drive, third and nine. They come with a blitz, open over the middle, and it is caught by Eric Jackson right at the marker. Lorenz put it at just a few inches above the AstroTurf, and Jackson was there. Just an absolutely great job of the Texas offensive line and their backs in protecting Lorenz. Here they come with a blitz. And I'm not sure exactly what back that was, but on the outside, it was a knockout blocked to allow Shea to throw that ball over the middle. On the measurement, they come up inches shot. You know, I believe it was Juan Kemp. Juan Kemp hitting the outside. I believe it was the strong safety. And everybody has to do their job. That's just a perfect example of it. And Juan certainly with the strength to make good things happen, just put a terrific block, I believe, on the strong safety. Texas will go for it on the Panther 34-yard line, fourth down and inches. Lorenz should have it on the quarterback sneak. Clock stops at nine seconds in the quarter and no measurement needed. First down. Well, if you're going to run a quarterback sneak, where do you go? Well, I'd take Blake Brockermeyer, John Elmore, and Dan Neal off the left side. 300 pounds, 290 pounds. You get good penetration. He was able to get the first down. Right over Dan Neal, their strongest player for the second straight year. The sophomore center. That is the end of the first quarter. It could be worse from Texas' perspective. They trail only 6 nothing. Yes, 
he did on the double play. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Is he pissed? Yeah. No, I was like, sorry, guys. Oh, it's okay, man. At Pitt Stadium, yeah, we up. begin the second quarter. Texas first and 10 on the Panther 34-yard line. Dave Barnett and Gip Nielsen. The 11th play of the drive coming up. Wallace, who just missed the long touchdown catch, comes wide on the left side, on the ground. And running into Brockermeyer is Holmes. He wanted to make a cut, and Brockermeyer stood in the way, and that allowed Hayes Clark to make the hit for the Panthers. Brockermeyer is a load. Watch him as he comes off the line, switching from the right side to the left side. He's got his guy just perfectly pinned. The back's got to go off that, but you can see the linebacker coming in, filling, and that just does tremendous damage to a, what looked like a good play. Texas running game averaging about a yard per carry so far. On the quick out, Curtis Jackson hit high by Mosley before he could stretch for the first down marker and a late flag on that hit by Mosley. Got him high and he may have gotten the face mask somewhere in there. Either that or a late hit. I think that's probably what happened. There it is. Auburn returning to the rankings this year after probation. Watch the three-step drop. One, two, three, and let it fly. He's got the kind of arm that can get the ball there very quickly. If you get a receiver out there isolated and get him the ball quick enough, then he has a chance to do something with it. That is something that Shea can do. And that's something that the offense needs to do. If these corners for Pitt are going to play five to seven to ten yards off the receiver, you got to go to that short passing game. And then as they creep up, then you can go into the intermediate routes. They go from the 20 with the mark off. First and 10. Holmes and Kemp, the split backs from Arends. Over the middle. Caught inside the five and then incomplete. Wallace. Seemed to bring it in, and then he got belted by Maurice Williams, and it popped out. He's a freshman from Rosenberg Terry, redshirted last year. Well, he ran a nice route on a little post pattern going down the field, breaking to the inside. Looks like the ball is right there, but it is in a crowd. We talked about the backup players having to step up. Only a freshman. He's got a lot of ability. That's a chance for you to be a star at a very young age. Second and 10 draw play, and Holmes with a nice spin move inside the 15-yard line. He wears that number 33, and there were comparisons when he signed with Texas from John Makovic to the most famous number 33 ever to play in this stadium, and that's Tony Dorsett who will be honored at halftime. Makovic, a cowboy assistant during the early part of Dorsett's career. Holmes with a set like maneuver to pick up seven yards, third and three. Here they come. On the blitz, got it off for Hakes, the tight end, first and goal, Texas, inside the eight. Hakes, the top returning tight end, 13 catches last year. They didn't go to the tight end last year that much. I think in the absence of Pinkney and Adams, they don't have much choice but to bring that position uh, much more into the scheme. In this offense, you have to use the tight end. And I really like the read here because Pitt coming with a blitz puts man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. If that ball is on the outside of Hakes, he has a chance to turn the corner, but a nice read by Marins. From the eight, first and goal. Blitz comes again. Deep fade for Curtis Jackson, who is out of the end zone. Timing just a little bit off again. 
Yeah, once again, and he, he, he decided to go for the deep player instead of go for the short player, and the short player was open. That being Matt Davis. He goes to the corner of the end zone, but Matt Davis had the ability to get that ball on the outside if he puts it out there. Nice catch, but it's out of the end zone. And the ability to go for the short man, Makovic had thought was the biggest area of improvement he'd seen from Marins in preseason. That's where the completion percentage goes up when you go to those sure receptions. Draw play, oh, Holmes block. stepping through, touchdown Anthony Holmes. Well, despite kind of a sloppy drive, they are able to put it in the end zone. And we're going to show you something very special after this extra point try. Which can give Texas the lead. Phil Dawson, redshirt freshman from Lake Highlands High School, the most decorated kicker of his high school recruiting class. Out of the hold of Chad Lucas is good. I want to show you one thing in college football and pro football, any football that just brings chills to my spine. Watch the left guard, number 66, John Elmore, as he comes over. Watch this block right here. Wham! And that allows Anthony Holmes to dance into the end zone. John Elmore with the trap block. Beautiful. Texas back in it. They lead 7-6. in front for the first time with 12 minutes and 39 seconds in the first half. The eight yard touchdown run by Holmes. Capping a long 17 play drive. It covered 80 yards in just over five minutes. You know, we've seen a lot of interesting things already in this football game. A center snapping it, not knowing the quarterbacks in the shotgun formation, but they have been able to overcome all that, Texas making things happen. Dawson hanging this one right to the goal line for Mark Butler. Crenshaw down to lead the special teams assault. And they wrap him up inside the 15. Finished off by Dwight Kirkpatrick. Number 45, a true freshman. Now we got a penalty on the play. Looked like Texas may have been Offside. The Southwest Airlines storyline so far. Texas struggling on the ground. Marins still somewhat through the air, just 5 of 11. Martin has carried for their score in 32 yards so far, and Fitzgerald limited to just 16 air yards so far. But you look at that 5 for 11 by Marins, you want that about 8 for 11, meaning you got to go to the underneath stuff, the shorter stuff, and make sure you get completions. He's had the short passes open. That just comes with knowing the offense, developing in this offense. Texas offsides on the kickoff. Johnny Majors second year back at Pittsburgh, a five year record here of 36 21 and one. Five years Iowa State, 16 years at Tennessee. He left there two years ago uh, with very bad blood. Uh, from his head, he did not like the fact that he was not allowed to continue his coaching career, presumably end it there in Tennessee, replaced by assistant Phil Fulmer. So uh, folks in Pittsburgh only too happy to welcome him back to what was a floundering program. As strong a program as there was in the late 70s, early 80s. And they have really dropped off the last several years. This kick returned from the five. And with an alley up the left side goes Butler to the 35 yard line. That's a 20 yard difference. Hit by Taji Allen. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Network. Pitt Stadium. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Dave Barnett and Gibb Nielsen, Texas, just taking the lead for the first time. Eight-yard run by Holmes. And after the offsides 
against the Texas special teams. Fitzgerald from the 36-yard line on first down goes play action and looks deep for Gell. Single coverage with Ellis. Caught. Touchdown. at 64 yards to give Pittsburgh the lead back with some lightning. Little play action fake, and boy, he just waited for him to clear. Got by Ellis, and he was off. Ellis being tended to where he fell, right at the 20-yard line. Well, you can see that the pit offense is certainly gelling. It was just man coverage in the secondary, the play fake. Fitzgerald just waited and waited and waited. The ball was not that well thrown. In fact, Jails had to come back to the inside as Ellis is being taken off the field right now, but that was just how you like it if you're Johnny Majors. You could see Ellis's leg go out from under him just as the ball arrived. Talk about bad timing for a cornerback, and he was helped to the Texas sideline appeared to twist something. He was trying to look back for the ball, and that's where the legs went out. Gels, who missed most of last year because of a knee problem, and boy, did they miss him. Ellis victimized, and it's 12-7 for the extra point merit. And this time, punches it right through. Texas drives 17 plays to score. Pitt takes one play to regain the lead. Back after this from Southwest Airlines. Brought to you in part by the Texas Lottery. And tonight's Lotto Texas estimated jackpot is $10 million. Joe Ellis being looked at on the Texas sideline after being victimized by Dietrich Gels on the 64-yard bomb from Fitzgerald. Merrick with the kick. And the return from the six by Curtis Jackson. Yeah. Great play call by Pitt because Texas has got to be feeling some satisfaction taking forever to get the lead, but they do after a 17 play drive. They go right back to them, hoping that they're back on their heels a little bit, and it worked. You know, that's where special teams comes in. Remember the kickoff? The kickoff, Texas did a nice job in covering the kickoff. Got Pitt tackled on about the 15-yard line. Texas offsides. You mentioned that it was like a 15 to 20-yard swing, allowing Pittsburgh excellent field position, which allowed them to go deep on that first play. Obviously, when we hear about Ellis's injury, you will too. All day from Arends through the hands of Hakes and almost intercepted again. Bradley and now Hakes, the tight ends, both dropping balls that almost turned into pickoffs. Daryl Cash, the strong safety, had a chance at that one. Arends's numbers, as you pointed out, well below 50%, should be better. A lot of drops. Here's uh, Tom Barnes going against Brockermeyer. Brockermeyer just doing a super job. You know, you're isolated in that left tackle position, maybe the most important position in football. Roderick Walker back at tailback, alternating every series so far with Holmes. Tumulty with the tackle. And bring up third and six. Walker battling injuries most of his career at Texas, now a senior. Makovic says the nice thing about his story is in having to rehab himself so much, and really the injuries go back to his senior year, he has learned to push himself to levels that he didn't know existed physically. So he's in the best shape he's ever been in. All right, Dave, looks like Pittsburgh's coming after him. Man coverage over the middle for Davis. Caught and then dropped, but the ball... Loose, covered by the Panthers at the 48-yard line. You know, if they take a look at this one, the ground may have caused this fumble. 
But it was a great job, and that's exactly what the official is saying. The ground caused the fumble. It was a nice job by Morenz, understanding the pit was coming on a blitz. It was a nice read by Davis. Here they come. Here comes Pitt. Morenz back, hits the quick slant. You're going to see the ball cause this fumble, I believe. Right Excuse there. me, the ground caused the fumble. Knocked the ball out. That is the proper call. Oh, Whoops. maybe not. No, looking at it from that side, it was a bad call. Look at this. The ball is out before he hits the turf. Well, each team has had a huge officiating brick on would-be turnovers. Texas still alive on first down. Morenz looking deep with time for Eric Jackson all alone, and he overthrew him. He underthrew the first two men deep. This time he wanted to make sure he got it there, and he got it over. Jackson, who was 30 yards in the clear. Well, there was a blown coverage in the pit defensive secondary that time, and if you're Shea Morenz, if you just put the ball a little bit short, or a little bit long, you've got an easy touchdown. He just aired that one out. Boy, on that one, you almost <laughs> want to be short just to make sure he can come back again. No way he was catching up to that one. Second and 10, Walker. Away from Cash, turns it up. Walker in a foot race, just tripped up by Miles Davis. Boy, another step, and he was gone. On those wide pad, uh, wide plays, you want to be able to get the corner. Now watch him as he gets the football. It's a foot race. As he goes around the right side, you know things are looking up pretty good. A nice block downfield by the outside receiver, allowing Walker to get additional yards. Give him 23. Texas at the Pittsburgh 32-yard line, trailing by six. Walker again. And driven back by Mosley as he neared the 25-yard line. Walker, the first running back for Texas to appear to hit a rhythm this afternoon. It's really crucial for offensive linemen to sustain their blocks. This time, Bustamante doing a nice job. Watch as he just rides that big defensive tackle down into the hole, allowing Walker to cut back. It was a nice cut, but that's what a running back is supposed to do. Watch the blocks of those tackles. Texas has been getting second and nine, second and ten. Walker sets him up second and four here and with some more options. First down catch, Curtis Jackson to the 15-yard line. See, now, Dave, that is just easy football, and that is smart football, and all of a sudden the passing percentage goes up. He's got a seven-yard pass. He doesn't have a linebacker underneath the throw. He's got the defensive back five yards off, five to seven yards off the ball. And that is what you want to do with this offense. You can't throw the ball deep as much as Shea is throwing it and be effective, although Texas is driving the football right now. You want to hit those intermediate routes, those short routes, and then you pick your spot to go on top. Moran's now getting some good protection, lots of time. Finally rolls and intended for Eric Jackson. Incomplete, bring up second and 10. Morenz has, because of all the problems with Pinkney and Adams, really not had that much practice time with them. And so their feeling was, obviously, you'd rather have them. But since he's worked so much with Eric, Curtis Jackson, and Davis, it's not as big a disadvantage as it might have been because they have been out for so long. Yeah, but these guys that are not playing today have seen it all. I mean, they went through a season together last year. So they know where everybody's going to be. Lorenz burns a timeout. Biggest difference is they are people who can turn a short game into 80 yards, and they are missing. 9.35 in the first half. Texas driving, but trailing 13 to 7. And uh, as slow as they have been to get their rhythm and to correct some uh, minor mistakes, which have turned into major 
uh, mistakes. It could be a lot worse than just six points then. Well, it really could be. And you know, when when Marin starts hitting those underneath passes like we were talking about, I think that completion percentage will go up, and I think that they'll have more continuity on offense. And defensively, they got to find some way to stop the combination of uh, of uh, Martin and also their outstanding outside receiver gels. Roderick Walker to the short side has no room and is buried for no gain at the 15. 13 7 Pittsburgh trail for one play and then went 64 yards deep to gels. Following the eight yard touchdown by Holmes and an injured Panther. Being looked at. And that is uh, Gerald Simpson outside linebacker. Right side of the field. Senior from Warren Ohio. Anthony Dorsett a good shot there number 12 the son of Tony. The backup quarterback played at Richardson Pierce High School. Third and 10 from the 15. Lorenz over the middle. Touchdown. Matt Davis. And once again, a nice read on the part of Marins. Combination coverage on the slot man. Davis, man for man on the outside. That's how you draw it up. That's nice. First collegiate touchdown for Matt Davis, who had all of one catch last year. This one ties it at 13. And the extra point by Dawson can give the Longhorns their second lead of this first half. Strong leg. Pounds it through. 14-13. Davis, the hot receiver in single coverage. Watch coming right at us. Marenz knows he's got single coverage on the outside. Just a quick post, a quick slant. Davis is there for the touchdown, and Texas now with a one-point lead. And give both teams now have shown some resiliency. Pitt with the quick strike after the long drive. Texas gets out of its disappointment and marches and just regains the lead. Well, it, it's really interesting when you look at this pass offense and having been involved in an offense very similar to this when I was at BYU, you can do incredible things with the football. This team is only going to get better and better and better as they hopefully get their two starting wide receivers back and as these young receivers or the backup receivers get more playing time. You know, you can go to practice and you can throw all these pass routes in practice. You go against the same guys every day, twice a day in a, in a lot of cases, but you really don't understand the pass offense and don't understand exactly where everybody's going to be unless you're in an actual game. And that's where Shea has got to be more patient. You know, we talk about this patient uh, factor. He loves to throw the ball deep, and he has tried to go on top a couple of times in man coverage. But the most important thing is to get those completion percentages up. When you're doing that, you're going to move the football. But you can score a lot of points when you're throwing the ball like this. Dawson driving this one to Butler, who fumbles it, then picks it up. And Trey Thomas rides him down at the 35 yard line. So often you'll see a kick returner drop the ball and it turns into a plus if he can get it back because the coverage units rhythm has been destroyed. That's a nice 28 yard return. You talk about that timing you talk about the rhythm. He's got this ball and he's going forward without the football and then all of a sudden everybody breaks down cuts back to the inside. Makes a nice gain, and once again, Pittsburgh starting with excellent field position on the 35, meaning they can do just about anything they want to do and not be hurt. Back to Martin, straight through the middle, and a first down. Martin at six feet, 200 pounds from here in Pittsburgh. Has added about 10 pounds of muscle this year. Already had the speed, and now the 
feel like he's added enough strength to make himself an even better prospect for the NFL. Johnny Majors, having coached the likes of Dorsett and a lot of other great ones in Tennessee, likes Martin's prospects about as well as any. A notch obviously below Dorsett. Gets outside. Victor Frazier prevents a touchdown. We've got a flag down on about the 45 yard line. This one may come back and I think they may call the wide receiver with a hold. He had reached the 26 on what was but is no more a 30 yard game. Billy Davis was downfield trying to help his teammate and I think he's going to get caught with the hole. Holding on the offense during the run. Spot foul. Ten yards. Repeat the down. Let's check it out one more time. Curtis Martin, Martin getting this football and you can see as he goes around the right side. Now here is where you're going to get the hold right there. Look at the tackle. Get the left arm in there. Pulling him down and that's going to call it back. Haji Allen, the victim of the hole by Billy Davis. From their 44, first and 11. Audibleizing and the snap fouled up, flags down. I'm not even sure if Fitzgerald ever got that ball. Panthers indicating Texas jumped off sides, but you saw Fitzgerald dropping back without the ball, which is always a penalty against the offense. Well, it was kind of interesting because uh, Norman Watkins was going back and forth. On the offense, five yards, repeat the down. The quarterback, Sean Fitzgerald, was sitting there watching him going, I've never seen this defense before. Where is he going? And he went back and forth. He saw this little number one going back and forth, and I think that distracted him enough where he forgot the snap count. So now first and 16 to go. Midway second quarter, Texas with its second one point lead of the day. Open Davis makes up for his mistake with a first down to the Texas 38. Tackled by Frazier. Three Texans start on this pit offense. Davis and Belden, the tight end from El Paso. Thomas, the left guard from Humble. Well, Fitzgerald just saw two coverage, and the wide receiver just went down the field, got past uh, Taji Allen, and then was open in the seam. Relatively easy throw. They do have speed on the corners, particularly with gels, as you've already seen. Wadley creeping up, and is there to combine with Clark for one of the few times they limit Martin to just a yard. You know, I really like the athletic ability, the tenacity of Kevin Watler. Watch him as he comes up right in the middle. That's plugging the hole right there. Here is a guy that has had to battle through reconstruction of both knees. Uh, just a, an unbelievable athlete with just a tremendous heart. He's the kind of guy you want on your team. Total winner. In his sixth year of eligibility. Unusual, but there is a loophole that allows for injuries like his. Ball intended for Askew, who I think expected the short route. Covered there by Westbrook. Little miscommunication. You know what? I think he was trying to throw that same route that he just threw on the right side of the field to the left side of the field, and Askew decided he wasn't going to go up in that little scene. He was going to stay short. You're exactly right, Dave. If you start seeing that you have two high safeties, meaning two safeties that are look like they're going to take the deep half of the field, the open areas are to the outside deep and down the middle. Three wide outs, third and nine. Martin set out in motion. Fitzgerald rolling that way. And overthrows Askew again, who again was not on the same page as his quarterback. Instant replay. It'll bring up fourth down. Well, more coverage, better coverage in the defensive secondary. Now, like you said, Dave, most of these guys are sophomores, and they are a very talented group. You can see Westbrook on the outside 
not causing any problems other than other than just staying with Askew, and uh, I guess was instrumental in the miscommunication. Good cover, people, in the secondary for Texas that time. David Merrick is on to attempt a 54-yard field goal. Senior from Worthington, Ohio, out of the hold of Ryan, has enough leg, and he's good. The hold was perfect and the kick watch the follow through he got all of that one and you know what he watches and he watches and then he says oh yeah let me take off my helmet make sure everybody sees how happy I am that's college football you know what else this is a pit school record previous mark 52 yards held by Fred Cox Carlson Long and Mark Brasco it just barely slipped in, too. Heck of a kick. Yeah, he's pumped up. Now he wants to be a linebacker. <laughs> wow. 16-14. Panthers have their third lead of the first half. Six plays. Go 28 yards and keep penalties against the Panthers. And then Merrick with the longest in its long football history to make it a two point game. Was it what is it like a hundred and three years of college football. A pit. They go back to the era when the Ivy League was the most feared college <laughs> football <laughs> conference in America. That <laughs> is how long they've been playing football. Here. And how fired up was he? He turns that one five yards deep in the end zone for Jackson. Texas starts from their 20 in Fred Goldsmith's debut at Duke they are blowing out Maryland now in the second quarter. Goldsmith former mentor Ken Hatfield glad that he took that job because it gave Hatfield the opening to come back into the Southwest Conference where he debuts with Rice next week. Well we've got seven minutes and four seconds left to go before halftime and coming up at halftime. We'll see some of the Tony Dorsett ceremony. This is Holmes. First down yardage to the 33 yard line for number 33. And there is the former Heisman winner, NFL Hall of Famer. He'll be honored at halftime and visit with us. We'll also visit with John Makovic and check out the Texas Lottery first half highlights. Tony Dorsett among the many former pit players who uh, are delighted that they rehired Johnny Major. Well, they absolutely love the guy. I mean, if you're playing with the Johnny Majors and you win a national championship, then there is something special about, about this guy. And there is his son. The bloodlines continue in this program. Anthony, a junior backup cornerback. Moran's chased by Davis, gets it off for Hakes. Outstanding play by Moran's for nine yards. Hakes ridden out by Mosley. That time Pitt was waiting for that little misdirection play. You know, you can fool you once and you can fool you twice. And if you fool you a third time, that guy's going to get cut from his scholarship. <laughs> he was waiting for Marantz. But you know, the thing that I like there is he looked right at the underneath guy. He was wide open. Even though he was getting pressured, it was a completion. Now he comes up second and one. Camp going in motion as Holmes bounces outside and then with a burst and a flag down and extra effort reaches the 42 yard line. Flag was thrown back in Texas territory. We pause briefly for station identification on the Raycom network. Panthers lead this one 16 14 a blocking penalty against Texas will wipe off a 16 yard pickup by Holmes.
foul, 15 yards, repeat the down. And that hurts, that backs him up at the 31. One more time as we take a look at it, they're getting good penetration going around the right side. Holmes making some good things happen. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, there's the clip. You can't cut. Wide receiver coming from the outside. Looked like he cut the strong safety. Second and 12. Chased by Mike Mooring. Let's it fly. And incomplete for Matt Davis. Like a jump ball with Mosley. Davis has a four inch height advantage there, but it took so long to come down that Mosley was able to time it. Now I'm not sure if Adams and Pinckney would have done this, but the receivers decided just to keep running away from the quarterback. When the quarterback's in trouble, you got to come back in and come back towards the quarterback to try and help him out. That's where experience comes in, and both receivers uh, on the outside and one back coming out of the backfield just kind of took themselves out of the play. That quarterback's in trouble. You got to come and help him. Whistles as Texas comes to the line of scrimmage, and this time the Panther defense uses a timeout. Six minutes, 31 seconds in the second quarter of the 300th game as a head coach in the career of Johnny Majors, 59 years of age. Only Fry, Paterno, and Sweeney have coached in more games among all active head coaches. You know, he's a proven coach and he knows how to get it done. He is a very classy individual, too. He not only coaches football players, but he also develops them into outstanding young men. He believes that that is extremely important. And you just can't say enough about uh, the quality of person that Johnny Majors is. Has a great program, uh, has the ability to rebuild a, a program very quickly. But not as quickly as before. Back when he took over the uh, in the early 70s, he brought in within a little over a year of taking this job 80 new players. You can't do that. Well, you anymore. can't do that now because of the NCAA regulations as far as offerings of scholarships and things like that. But you know, if there is a man that can turn something around and get players believing in themselves, it is Johnny Majors. After the timeout, third and 12. They come after Morenz, who goes short for Holmes. And he's hemmed in, but again, with extra yardage stretches, he's going to be a yard and a half shy of the marker, but you have to like the effort from Holmes. Hit by Eric Kasparovich. This will be a punting situation. I really like that effort because he was out there by himself. It shows you the strength that he has in his legs. He was just trying to get that first down all by himself. Masik on to kick it away. The Panthers will get it with under six minutes to play in the first half, still leading 16-14. Butler dropping back to the 25. This uh -oh. time a perfect snap, and they almost get Masik. It will be a roughing penalty. They got him, but not the ball. You know, I'm not sure how he missed the football. He started to rush up the field and then came back to the inside. And I am not sure how Billy, Billy Davis. Davis missed it. Watch it one more time. If you can see it coming from the left side of your screen, comes back to the inside. Boy, that was close. I guess the official standing right there, but it looked like that he had a chance to get his hand on it. Let's take a look at it one more time from the end zone. Look at this. Well, you know, it's interesting because Vasek just put that ball to the right. I think he had his hands right over where the ball was supposed to be kicked, and the ball just kind of went off to the right, and there is uh, Vasek on the sidelines, and he's limping. He got hit pretty good on that play. He made a great adjustment. But what a change for the Texas offense. Now they have the ball on, what, the 44-yard line going in. Motion man, Eric Jackson on first down. Right in the middle. Matt Davis. Perfectly timed, first down yardage plus to the 33. 
Davis confidence growing. You can see it in each pattern. Big wide receiver, and once again, the reason the passing game can be effective is the play of the offensive line. Look at these guys. They're big. They're 290 pounds, 300 pounds, and they make a nice little pocket inside. Now watch Morenz as he comes to the outside. Little play fake. Hold the linebackers. Come to the outside. He's got the hook open right in the middle, which is an easier throw. Decides to go on the outside to Davis. Back in at tailback is Walker. Nears the 25, hit by Tyler Young, a junior transfer from Notre Dame out of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. We haven't talked much about Daryl Wilson, who was uh, heading into his redshirt freshman season from Dallas Carter. Kind of dropped out of the headlines because of an injury late in his high school career, but polling the Texas players to put together the media guide, their sports information department asked, who do you think will be the biggest surprise this year? He was the runaway winner, but he won't be this year. He broke his arm. He's out for the year. Walker will be very close to the 23, the line needed for the first down. The good news there is Walker and Holmes are very respected backs. They don't have necessarily the breakaway speed that they like, but they have a lot of experience, and they're much better suited at that position to make up for an injury than they are at the wide receiver spots to make up for those suspensions. Well, you're having a chance to see great running tactics by Holmes, and you're watching Roderick Walker. Well, if you got Wilson in there, a guy who has got tremendous leg strength, and you've got a great deal of depth at that position. Just short, third and one. They may need to measure. Holmes heading straight between the tackles and Texas feels they don't need a measurement but the officials differ. I think this ball is just barely over where it needs to be for a first down and it is just tenacious in the trenches. That's where you win. That's where you got to get it done especially when you're in a third down situation. Third and short you need to win that battle at the line of scrimmage. Ho. Oh. Just by the stripe. Just by the stripe. Watch once more time. In the trenches. Here it is. This is where you battle. Listen. That's where you win it. You get low and you go deep. Make sure you bury those defensive linemen and you get that back going over the top. 13th first down for Texas, another long, time-consuming drive, under four minutes. Deep ball, Davis open almost, one hands it in the corner. And upset that he didn't. That ball was floated out to the corner, and Davis just about made a miraculous catch. Once again, pretty good read that time by Morenz. He didn't have a whole lot of time to throw it. He had to make the decision quickly and get it outside, but he just about put it right on the money. Really, the only really poor pass he's thrown was the to uh, Eric Jackson, who was 30 yards in the clear. Everything else has been either dropped or right there. Second and 10. Boy, he's got both big offensive linemen. Holmes, first down and inside the 10. First and goal at the six. Well, again, that's the position where they can afford to take a hit with Holmes and Walker both looking sharp. This is just a little counteraction. Now, look on the left side of the uh, screen. Coming to your right side, look at the load out in front of him. Brockermeyer, John Elmore. You're going to gain some yards if those guys get out there all by themselves. Nice running by Anthony Holmes. 17 yards, first and goal. Three and a half minutes, second quarter. Pat Fitzgerald, backup tight end in motion. Holmes oh, nice through the cut. middle to the two. It was a good cut. I thought he was going to get in. Boy, that was a beautiful cut that time because he was reading the block of the offensive tackle. And I think the official's down there telling somebody something. I think he's talking to the players. Hey, listen, one more time. You do that one more time, and it's all over for you, buddy. I'm not sure who, we who he was talking to, but nice cut by Holmes that time. Priest Anthony Holmes. 
on a hundred yard pace today. Second and goal from the three. Moran's off play action. Corner of the end zone. Hakes. Touchdown. Flag is down, however. I think you're going to see a late hit on the quarterback. That's exactly what it is. Tom Bart with the shot on Shea Morenz as soon as he threw the ball. But that was a beautifully thrown pass. That is a touchdown pass that you love to see if you're a coach because that had that wasn't the kind of pass you drill in there. You just kind of set it up there and let your big tight end run underneath it. And that's what happened. Beautiful play. Now Texas may go for two. Let's see what they do. Got it. Personal foul. Roughing the passer against the defense on the touchdown. The penalty carries over to the kickoff. Have the try from the three, 15 yards on the kickoff. They've got to go for two because uh, 20 to 16, 21 to 16, there's no difference. If you go for two and get it, you're up six as opposed to five. Touchdown catch by Hakes. Well, let's see what they're going to do. Gives see, them 16, that option. 16 to 20. Uh, no, I think they're going to kick it. Have to go 16 21. I'm surprised. Yeah, you would think that they would go for two. Chad Lucas, one time backup quarterback, now being used as kind of a utility back, wing back, fullback. Extra tight end is the holder, so he would be uh, a good holder on a fake, but this time they go. 4-1 and lead by five. Hakes touchdown catch capping an 80 yard drive. Watch the little counter move by the quarterback, the little play fake, and this is just a nice, soft little touch. Hakes is underneath it, and that is just the way you want to see it. That is just beautiful. Watch Hakes. Comes down inside, runs by both linebackers. Defensive secondary, very soft, and as number 17 tries to get back there, he can't do it. Maurice Williams was in a bind and Hakes took advantage of it. So a back and forth first half swings Texas way again. This must have been John Makovic's thinking by going for one if you're at 21. If, if uh, Pittsburgh scores, put seven points on to 16, that'll give you 23 so you could actually win the game with a field goal. So if you got into a position where you had to kick a field goal, you could kick a field goal and win it instead of uh, risking the situation where if you got into that situation, you kick a field goal for a tie. So I guess it's pretty good logic, you know, there. Well, they've got all the possibilities that most coaches on, on a cheat sheet, so they don't have to make instantaneous decisions. You just have a chart there, and you look at it, and whatever the chart says, you do. For most coaches. Yeah. I would think that Makovic would fall into that situation. He knows exactly what he wants. Now because of the roughing the passer, Dawson will kick from midfield and drive this one. The Butler in the back of the end zone. Texas has had uh, some difficulties offensively, but now they seem to be hitting a nice stride and they've had long scoring drives. Well, it looks a little bit better right now, and that's what happens when you start to get a feel for this offense. Uh, Morenz is not forcing the ball right now. He's not taking the deep pass. That's not to say you don't throw the deep pass, but you pick your spots a little bit better to throw that deep one. He has got the arm to do it. Curtis Martin away from Wattler, and Baskin finally Knocking him down after a pickup of 15 yards. Along with Westbrook. Boy, this guy is really something special. Kevin Wattler just missing on the play. But if you don't hem this guy in, keep him within those tackles, he is dangerous. Westbrook was, uh, was shaken up just briefly, it looked like, and he'll sit out at least this play. Clock rolling again, 2.35 in the half. Martin 
Bounces off another tackler chased by Thomas and Allen undercuts him first down Texas 46 yard line. They have not curtailed Curtis the way you said they had to. They really are not containing him right now. A nice 19 yard gain as he goes to the left side, comes back to the right side. He's got 78 yards so far in the game. And watch this coming right at us from the end zone. Waltner gets blocked there. Nice job by the fullback. And then you can see that Martin has that capability, not only strength, but quickness as he gets to the outside around the right. Did again showing resiliency. That time Martin wrapped up in a hurry by Tony Brackens. We haven't called his name that often. He was their sack leader, their pressure leader, their leader in tackles for a loss as a freshman, true freshman last year. Southwest Conference's defensive newcomer of the year. Well, you know, you talk about Brackens, you talk about Stoney Clark. We haven't really mentioned a lot about him. We haven't talked a lot about Thomas Baskin. And in this alignment, those guys have got to make some plays. In the football game right now, a huge player, Chris Aikens. He's only a freshman. They've got him listed, I think, at, what was he, 308? And now he's down to 295. A meager 295. A meager 295. So, you know, those guys have got to make a contribution inside. They just don't line up and not make plays. Too many plays are having to be made by the linebackers. Sporting News likes to rank uh, individuals, rank position groups against each other coming into the college football season. They really like Rockermeyer, the number two ranked offensive tackle in the nation in their uh, system. Bracken's the number five defensive tackle. Neal the number six center and Ellis among the top ten quarterbacks. Well you know Brockermeyer has moved from that right side to the left side and and that is a real change. It's a real challenge because your steps are a little bit different but he is the kind of athlete that uh, can do that. You can see the preseason uh, sporting news ranks of different positions. Second and six. There he goes. Martin knocked out by Thomas at the 25. He may have 100 yards by halftime at this rate. 17 more yards for Curtis Martin. He stops the clock at 141. That was the old Statue of Liberty play without the running back taking it out of the quarterback's hand as he was getting ready to throw it. But Fitzgerald came back in the pocket looking to throw it and then just spun right around and that was Martin coming around from the right to left side. Beautiful play. Very well executed. You'll get 100 on his next carry. In all oh, your probability. Oh you're pretty optimistic. Well they haven't stopped him yet. <laughs> Panthers one more timeout. This is Dukes. And the fullback may struggle for a yard at best. Now I'm not sure if it is just the player carrying the ball but that was a lot better execution inside by the Texas defensive lineman. They'll go without a huddle a minute 20 and count. Second and nine great push up by Brackens and they settled for the short toss gels almost squirts free block rolling at the 18. And again Fitzgerald will use a timeout now they're out of timeout. Dietrich gels. You know you know I really didn't think they needed to call a timeout at this particular point with a minute three left to go in the half. You want to save one timeout but they decided not to do it. Watch the Fitzgerald as he comes to the outside. Anytime you can get gels isolated you want to do it. Excellent concentration then he gets back to the inside and almost slips away. We're going to go back and show you this little Statue of Liberty play because it is beautiful. You can't really see the quarterback there but he was looking downfield like he was going to throw it. Then all of a sudden out of nowhere Curtis Martin comes around the outside and look at the power and the strength as he runs the football. Very impressive. You know Sean Fitzgerald over on the sidelines you, you talk about his brother on the Texas sidelines Pat. They used to battle at the dinner table. They used to battle their whole lives. I mean very competitive family never felt like that they would be able to play against each other. 
things work out in pretty precarious situations sometimes. And their parents are here. They had a hard time deciding which side to sit on, and they finally went with the home team. The safe decision. They're sitting with the Pitt fans today. They play in Austin. They'll sit with the Texas fans. Walter right up the middle. The ball is loose. Robert Reed wrestling with Reuben Brown. And the Longhorns say they have it at the 30-yard line. They do. Kevin Wattler, what a play. On the blitz, absolutely timed it perfectly. He had hold of the quarterback before the quarterback could hand the ball off. Watch him as he comes right up the middle. Here he is. Oh, just a terrific timed play by Kevin Wattler. You know, he has the ability, Dave, to make big plays. Not bigger than this one. Oh, what a job that was. Very opportunistic defensive play by Wattler. Great shot of him on the sideline. If he'd wanted to, he could have taken that handoff. <laughs> Whistles on the snap. And flags on the snap. 55 seconds in the first half. Dead ball, illegal procedure on the offense. Five yards, repeat the down. All right, let's set this up for you because it's important with this Texas passing game. They got the ball on the 25 yard line. They've got 56 seconds remaining in the half. They got two timeouts left. You want to throw these nice safe passes. You can bet the pit is going to drop into a zone. Roderick Walker. Knocked out by Tyler Young. And the clock uses only six seconds down to 50 at the 23. But you got to get a little bit more than just that. In fact, that I believe was, what was it, a loss of one? This Pitt led early 6 0, Texas 7 6. Pitt the long pass right back up 13 7. Texas has bounced back with two long drives to lead 21-16. Also mixed in there, a school record 54-yard field goal by Merrick for the Panthers. Catch by Chad Lucas, who until today has been on the throwing end of these connections. Lost the battle last year to start at quarterback, replacing Peter Gardere. But he's good enough at 6'2", 235, good enough physical specimen. They want him in there somewhere, so they're calling him their utility back. That one in the sideline is uh, ruled incomplete for Curtis Jackson, knocked out by Mosley with 21 seconds. Now Texas will come out. I think they're going to punt the ball, but not really great execution. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh was just showing that they were in a zone defense and they were going to drop everybody off. And you know that's where you maybe want to slip a back out of the backfield and just give him a give him a nice easy little pass and let him get five to ten yards and stay in bounds. The main thing now they've got to actually kick the ball and that has not been a sure thing for them in this first half. They've had a bad snap and a near block. In fact twice they've had near block. They came reasonably close to getting that one. Butler fair catches with 15 seconds but that's 15 seconds they didn't have to have 43 yard kick. And you're exactly right. So not a great job of controlling the clock. You would think that they would do just a little bit better job, but uh, we've only got 15 seconds left to go before halftime. Texas with the lead, 21-16 over Pittsburgh. They should stay very close to number 26. Yeah. <laughs> stay right with him, and then don't lose sight of number 29. Just for the heck of it, just don't lose sight of it. This guy can run. Well, they don't have to worry about gels. He comes out. Three wides. Martin. Look out. Martin with a block by Chad Askew, escorted all the way to the 30, and there's five seconds left. Boy, you just cannot let this guy get loose. He is so elusive. 
and so powerful. Watch, it's just a quick draw play. And look at him, comes right up the middle. And then look out when he gets in the open field, going to the outside, getting the nice block out there by Ch Chad Askew. And then very smartly and wisely getting out of bounds. So on the last play of the half, on the heels of this record 54 yarder, Merrick is on to try a 47 yarder. Same angle as the last one. This one is no good. He just hooked it. But it's an opportunity that Texas should not have afforded the Panthers. Clock management almost burns the Longhorns, but they lead at the half by five. The Southwest Conference Game of the Week is brought to you by the Don't Wreck Your Life program. By the all-new Ford Mustang. By Wrangler, the Western Original. And by Texas Farm Bureau. Like 11 yards. 146 for Martin and 174 overall on the ground for Pitt. Through the air, Morenz has already thrown it 27 times. 14 of 27, 131. And Fitzgerald is 5 of 9 with the big 64 yard strike in there. Texas, an excellent third down percentage. Both teams hurt by penalties, and Texas dominated possession time. Well, they honored Tony Dorsett at halftime. He is going into the Hall of Fame. We had a chance to talk to him in a very special moment for him. It's been a very special year being inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And then in December, he will be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Of course, that great national championship, the Heisman Trophy. He is some kind of a special player. There is nothing that he didn't do in, in the sport of football. Every possible accomplishment that man accomplished. As you told him, it was just amazing when you go down the list of accomplishments. What a special performer he was. And you know, there's somebody on his heels right now, and that is Curtis Martin. I'm sure Tony watching Curtis Martin play in the first half had to be impressed. Texas won the toss and deferred their decision, so they will uh, receive the kick to begin this second half on a cool overcast perfect day for football in Pittsburgh. Great setting for college football. Todd Barton kicks off. Return from the four by Curtis Jackson. Room right up the middle and the last man to get him was Barton the kicker. A step away from a breakaway. Well that shows you the speed of Curtis Jackson going right up the middle. As we take a look at the game plan, I have a chance to be the professor here. 34 flavors giving that uh, a grade. You know, I guess you'd have to uh, look at a C there because they haven't been able to stop the run. Back up, step up. You know, with Davis catching the, the touchdown, I'd have to give them a B. And Curtell Curtis, gosh, I hate to flunk anybody, but 150 yards in the first half, way too much. Roderick Walker picking his way for about five yards. Walker and Kemp, the starting backfield, along with Shea Morenz. 27 passes, an awful lot for one half. It really is, but you know, they've had the long drives, and if you're going to have long drives and you get a lot of first downs, then you're going to have a lot of plays. They've been running the football pretty well, and they're passing the ball pretty well, but once again, I want to see that percentage up to about 20 out of 27 instead of 16 out of 27 or 17 out of 27. Walker given just three yards, second and seven. He tries the other side, and it's going to be close for the first down. Hit by Maurice Williams. Walker and Holmes, a nice tag team on the ground in the first half. From Irving Nimitz High School. They both have had uh, better than five yards per carry in their careers, which for any running back in any system. Oh, that's, e that's exactly what you want. If you can get four to five yards a carry, you, you know you're doing a, a great job on the ground. But they should. This is a veteran offensive line. They play together. They know how to play. They should get uh, four to five. 
Camp in motion. First down, Kerry Walker again. And Texas opening this third quarter just going to uh, the muscle advantage in the middle. Just trying to grind them down. What an excellent point because this is where these big 290 and 300 pound offensive linemen, this is where it really takes a toll in a game. When you get late in the game and you have smaller players that are constantly being pounded on by players that outweigh you by 20 to 25 pounds, you start to feel it late in the third and into the fourth. Motion man is Hakes, play action, and Morenz looks deep. Eric Jackson, the target, incomplete. Almost intercepted by Mosley. Three blue jerseys down there with Eric Jackson. It will be third and six. Morenz had excellent protection that time as he sat back in the pocket. But once again, he goes for that high percentage or that low percentage pass where he may have had some underneath players that would have gotten him the first down. He loves to throw that ball deep, but you got to pick your spots and you got to know when to throw it deep. And I think that that's one of the things that John Makovic is trying to help him understand. Patience in this passing game is vital. Well, right away, they have to use their first time out, 13 minutes and 15 seconds in the third quarter. And a break at Pitt Stadium with Texas on top 21 16. Well, it's as tough as a bronc, but behaves like a lamb. It's the best truck in Texas, Dodge Ram. Put it first by the ones who ought to know what it takes to perform. Dodge Ram is taking Texas by the horns. The full size Magnum powered Dodge Ram. Voted best truck of Texas by the Texas Auto Riders Association. So get your hands on Texas Best. Dodge Ram is taking Texas by the homes. Smack dab in the middle of Tennessee is a city that strikes a chord in people the world over. But the flip side of Nashville is that it's also a major financial center because it's served by Nations Bank. Enabling Opryland USA to work in concert with the nation's largest treasury management group, giving the Williams smarter ways to pay for college, and providing the kind of performance that satisfies even the toughest customers in Nashville and in 1,900 other communities throughout our nation. The competitive environment of high-performance racing demands reliability. That's why the International Motor Sports Association asked Exxon to formulate their official racing fuel. They knew that Exxon would create a high-performance fuel that exceeds the demands of grueling race conditions. And that same reliable performance can be found every time you fill up with Exxon 93 Supreme. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. John Makovic's teams at Texas have averaged almost 400 yards a game of total offense on a good clip here. Third down and Moren's chase and drop. Mike Mooring gets the sack with flags down. And I think you're going to get a face mask penalty as Mooring grabbed Shane Morantz. He grabbed that face mask and threw him down. And that time, Shea could have stepped up right in the pocket and been okay, but he decided to go out, try to get out around the outside, got himself in trouble. You know, there haven't been any little penalties. Seems like every flag has wiped out a big play. Well, this is a big one right here. Face mask, five yards. There's no question about the fact that he did grab the face mask. Now watch Shea, he can step up in the pocket. He's got a good little uh, uh, seam going there, but there you can see the face mask, and that looked like a little bit more than a five-yard face mask penalty. I think Boring got off a little easy that time. It'll be third and one. They snap it from the 41 of the Panthers, and really it's about a half yard they need. They have the first down if they crack the 40. Now, I'm sure he didn't mean to, but that was pretty blatant. You know, in effect, that's that's about a 25-yard walk-off when you consider where the sack would have placed him. They've been an excellent 50% third down converting unit so far. Here they come. And 
Cutting back for the first down and more Holmes with a straight arm to the 32 yard line and dragged out by Williams. Priest Anthony Holmes and Roderick Walker. A very effective tag team so far. Wants John Elmore number 66 an excellent block on Tumulty freeing up Holmes. And that is what you want to do. You got to win that battle at the line of scrimmage. Good things happen when that uh, when that takes place. Look at Holmes. Nice cut again. Very impressed with Holmes today. Junior from San Antonio has him first and ten. Moran's hit from the blind side by Tom Bart. Their leader with seven sacks a year ago. He got away from the Brockermeyer side of the line. Brockermeyer was switched from right to left to prevent that sort of thing. Well, and I also think it was Neal coming back to help the center. Watch as Morenz comes back in the pocket. Here comes Neal. He doesn't have anybody to hit and just doesn't get there in time. He was the helper in that situation. Nobody was head up on the center. And it was Hakes, the tight end, he beat. Loss of seven. Walker still going to the 24, just shy of the first down. And it was all Williams could do to wrestle into the Astro turf there. Gain of 15 for Roderick Walker. Well, John Makovic has to be uh, pretty pleased with the running attack going on right now, you know. I've got a great deal of respect for John Makovic. Where he has gone, he has been successful, and I love the way he develops quarterbacks. He helps them understand the game, and I love his philosophy offensively. It just takes the patience. Here they go. Needing one, Juan Kemp tumbling to the 17 easily with a first down. Another tackle by Williams, and the Texas drive continues. Aided greatly by the face mask penalty. Johnny Majors saying yesterday that most of the coaching that he's concentrated on has been between the ears. He's tried to do an attitude readjustment for players who had grown used to losing, in his opinion. And that is a very important thing to do when you're starting to turn around a program. You've got to get players believing in themselves. Here they come. First man through. Kemp for about two. You know, it's interesting, and this is something that uh, I would like to talk to Shea about after the game, because you can definitely see when Pittsburgh is going to come with a blitz compared with how they play zone. And this is where the recognition for a quarterback comes in. Is Shea Morenz right now recognizing that? Can he tell that the corners are playing more head up when they're coming after him? Can he tell that the safeties are cheating up just a little bit? Those are the kind of things you recognize. Now, this Texas offense doesn't audible a whole lot. All on the ground this opening possession of the second half and it's covered up almost the first five minutes. Second and eight. Now to the air. Eric Jackson knocked out at the 10 again by Williams. Now that helped me answer a question because that was an audible call. And I'm sure Shea came up to the line of scrimmage looked and to, to see where that strong safety was. He looked like he was coming from the outside. Looks like the linebackers were cheating up a little bit. So he would decided to go to the outside with a quick out. That just shows me that he was understanding what he was seeing on defense. Eric Jackson and Davis both top of your screen wide right. Two tight ends Fitzgerald in motion and Texas moved early on the right side. Joe Phillips it looked like. You know it's kind of interesting right now Joe Phillips. As we take a look at the uh, the field Joe Phillips I think is playing the right tackle position and they have brought Trent Elliott into the game. That is Joe Phillips playing the right tackle position. Joe Phillips was inside. But it might have been Elliott who moved. Just uh, just enough to get the flag. Third now and eight needed. Here Another they come. Big flag on the blitz. They come. Morenz gets it off, and Eric Jackson makes the catch at the three-yard line. First and goal.
That's a great job by both Morenz and Jackson to come back and follow that ball out of Morenz's hands from a big crowd. Well, it really was a nice play, but in a blitz-controlled route, you want to throw this before you get hit like this. Morenz just kept going back. Well, as soon as he recognizes blitz, it should be one, two, three, and throw. Get rid of that ball instead of completely backing up like that and taking that punishment. Somehow finding Jackson. Another whistle. Texas snapped it early, and not everybody moved. This time, I think they catch a pit offside. Offside on the defense at the distance. Repeat the down. Let's pause briefly. Station identification on the Raycom network. With Gip Nielsen, Dave Barnett, midway in the third quarter at Pitt Stadium, and Texas looking to add to what's already its biggest lead of five points. First and goal, the markoff moves the ball to the two-yard line. And outside, walking in for the touchdown, Juan Kemp. With the second touchdown of his career at Texas. Interrupted by a transfer year, leaving Michigan, and then an injury year two years ago. You know, that was a pretty impressive drive, most of it coming on the ground. They're winning the battle at the line of scrimmage, and whether you're a passing team or a running team, you got to win that battle. Now the Longhorns say, we're going for two, 16 to 27. And if they get the two, they lead by 13. Go to the outside. And forever corner of the end zone. And Matt Davis, I think, ran past the back of the end zone and then came back in, which drew the flags. And it will uh, wipe off the catch and no two-point conversion if it's what it looked like. I think the call is exactly right. You cannot go out of the end zone, and that's what Matt Davis did. He got too close, and then I think he got pushed just a little bit. There was some incidental contact. Illegal touching. Receiver went out of bounds and came back in. It's not a, it's no, no, there's a loss of down. Try is no good. So keep it at 27 to 16, 11 point lead. Well, here's Shea, he's going to the outside. He doesn't have anybody out there. And then here comes Davis. He does a little uh, question mark route as we used to refer to it. But he stepped out of the back part of the end zone and that is no good. But here's the touchdown coming right at us. And this is just blocked perfectly. And Juan Kemp says, hey, this is like uh, easy, man, easy. We return after this message from Southwest Airlines. This label tells you it's 100% cotton. This label tells you it's 100% real cheese. And this label tells you it's 100% low fares. Always check the label. Southwest, the low fare airline. Southwest Airlines wrote the book on low fares. And it's available in paperback. For low fares to more places more often, fly Southwest, the low fare airline. What's the difference between diet Dr. Pepper and regular Dr. Pepper? Can't see the difference, can't hear it. The amazing thing is you probably can't taste the difference either. Discover what millions already have, the great taste of diet Dr. Pepper. The average ice cube can't taste the difference between diet Dr. Pepper and regular Dr. Pepper. But the amazing thing is you probably can't either. Discover what millions already have, the great taste of diet Dr. Pepper.
Sooner or later, you're gonna run into someone who will convince you that speeding is a bad idea. Juan Kemp's touchdown, giving Texas an 11 point lead midway in the third quarter. Another strong kick by Phil Dawson, the freshman. Driving Butler back here is goal line. Buried at the 20. Ball knocked loose, but after it had been ruled down by Bryant Westbrook. And it's still pit ball. Today's game is brought to you by Exxon Gasoline. It's for high performance. Rely on the Tiger. Texas has hit uh, what historically has been their magic number. When they score 25 or more, they almost never lose. Oh, you're trying to put a curse on them. Huh? Trying to put a curse on them? <laughs> no, just, just framing the picture historically. That's a pretty good eye. Martin gets out of jail and turns a loss into about 18 yards. Well, he had near 150 in the first half. That gets him a good start on 200. Tony Dorsett territory. Well, that was just an impressive run. What more can you say? It looked like the Texas defense came back and worked on their stunts and trying to find some way to get this guy stopped in the backfield. Looks like they got him right there, but they don't wrap him up. And then watch what happens. Wow. 17 yard pickup on the first snap of the third quarter for Pitt. Again, they have him wrapped up, and this time it holds. Takes four white jerseys to surround him, and he's finished off by Clark. He, he is one of the most exciting runners with a two yard loss of anybody in football. <laughs> you know, looked like they had him wrapped up. He dances around and dances around. Still looks like he has a chance maybe to do something more than lose to but hands off to the Texas defense if Texas is going to come up there then if you're pit you got to throw the ball call it a loss of four second and 14 Reed coming on a blitz got him late incomplete Fitzgerald never saw Reed so it had nothing to do with the pass overthrown for Martin also Brackens in ball Joey Ellis by the way uh, we understand with a sprained ankle. We have not been told whether he'll return or not, but he's still not in the game. And Taji Allen, number two, remains in at the left corner. There is the good speed that you're looking for defensively for the Longhorn defense that time with uh, Reed coming around the outside, putting the pressure on the quarterback. That's what you want with the active linebackers. Big play for Texas, hoping to get full control of this game. On third and 14, they let Martin get free again. He's got the first down. There is apparently no yardage too difficult for him to pick up. No matter what the situation. Well, this is impressive. If you cut it, uh, what was it, third and 14, and you can run the ball right up the middle on a little uh, draw. That presents some problems uh, to a defensive team. This guy is really something special. What more can we say about him? He's got the speed, he's got the quickness, he's got the special knack of finding the open holes. I haven't used him much as a pass receiver today. This for about five yards driven out by Thomas. Last year, the leading pass catcher, though, 33 for 249 yards and a handful for Gary Darnell, the Texas defensive coordinator. Well, he is the new defensive coordinator at uh, the University of Texas and very well respected in college football. But boy, he's having a tough time trying to find a way to stop or slow down Curtis Martin. Texas moving from the 4-3, which they had four years under Leon Fuller, David McWilliams, almost like Oklahoma leaving the wishbone. They were that solidly identified with that system. Look at this. Martin in a foot race with Thomas inside the 20. The 
200 yard mark and in fact surpassing it on his 20th carry of the afternoon. I mean just watch. It's incredible. Boy he's got some talent. We do have a Texas player down as we take a look at it one more time. Watch Brackens come across a big Reuben Brown. He is one of the best at that lap left tackle position in college football a lot like Brockermeyer. Brackens trying to come down and catch him if he comes back inside but Martin went to the outside. Robert Reed is the injured Longhorn the strong side outside backer. Helped off with a slight limp. Martin over 10 yards per carry at 204 officially. You know, and that can't make Gary Darnell a very happy man. You know, he was expecting a lot more. Obviously, this is a change from what they have been doing in the past. They've been in that 4-3 defense with.